Welcome to FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. The crisis in Iraq continues to make headlines, but it's the way media look back at the U.S. war there that can be most revealing. A Washington Post news article surprisingly referred to it as a war that just a few years ago seemed on the brink of going down in history as a success. The implication of such discussions is that it was the presence of U.S. troops that was keeping Iraq safe, a perspective that sometimes made explicit. Here's NBC's Richard Engel on June 18th. Iraqis remember all too well the vicious civil war that tore this country apart just a few years ago. It was the American troop surge that kept it from spiraling completely out of control. This time, the U.S. is keeping its distance. The success of the 2007 troop surge is a familiar story, but it's been challenged as myth by military analysts and foreign policy experts, who point out that in the early stage, the U.S. surge actually made Iraq more violent. The eventual decline in violence, critics argue, had less to do with U.S. troops and more to do with other factors, including a ceasefire agreement by a major Shiite militia and the ethnic cleansing of certain neighborhoods. Uncritically promoting the idea that the surge worked in Iraq is more than a misunderstanding of that war, with the implication that it's only U.S. troops that keep a place safe. It's a recipe for never-ending war. Of course, one of the most obvious features of Iraq coverage has been the return of so many pundits and politicians who were so wrong about Iraq in the first place. The network Sunday shows showed no sign of changing course. Now to weigh in on all of this, former Vice President Dick Cheney. But what I didn't read in your op-ed is what is your solution, your plan right now for Iraq? What would you be doing? NBC's Meet the Press went in a similar direction, inviting Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to discuss how Iraq is tied to Iran. You're well briefed on how the United States is approaching its negotiations with Iran to get it to abandon a nuclear weapons program. Are you concerned, based on anything that you've seen, that the U.S. is softening its negotiating stance to try to get Iran's help in Iraq? Given Netanyahu's long record of exaggerating the threat posed by Iran, we're not sure he should be considered well briefed. The same might be said of Gregory, who is talking about Iran's nuclear weapons program, a program not known to exist. Interestingly, though, picking Netanyahu as an expert is a twofer of sorts. He can tell you about Iran's threatening weapons in the same way he did about Iraq. There is no question whatsoever that Saddam is seeking and is working and is advancing towards the development of nuclear weapons. No question whatsoever. Lucky for him, you don't have to be right to make it in U.S. media. Well, finally, the new Republican majority leader in the U.S. Congress, Kevin McCarthy, will be wielding a lot of power, so it would seem appropriate that journalists furnish the public with some serious information about what he's likely to do. Time Magazine said it was giving us that with a short item purporting to offer three things we should know about McCarthy. These were, he won some money, not much, in the lottery when he was a teenager, he worked closely with then-California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger, and actor Kevin Spacey watched him while researching a role for the show House of Cards. While they weren't the only ones, CNN.com had five things to know about the new majority leader. From them, you would learn, along with the lottery and the Kevin Spacey, that McCarthy works out, and he was spotted at a softball game wearing linen slacks and flip-flops. He's also cruised through re-elections on charm, intellect, and savvy. The only real substance CNN offered was to say that McCarthy had nuanced views on immigration that might be problematic. What those views were wasn't really explained, but you do know about those flip-flops. Thanks for watching FAIR TV.